Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, everybody, for coming this morning so early. And thanks especially to the organizers of this, uh, ama of this amazing conference the, the, for, in for inviting us. They actually saw a version of this talk. And even then, they still, invite they still wanted to see it again. So that's <laughs> really <laughs> quite strange. So yeah, we di we're displaying, good. So uh, yes, this, this is a puzzler session. There were, uh, many years ago, there used to be Java puzzlers, and there, were, there was a kind of a fantastic double act between two real experts, foundational experts in Java, and this, this was a really good show. I'm afraid you've got us instead today. <laughs> um, so just some brief, some brief introductions. Obviously, I'm Morris Naftalin. Well, not obviously, but I am Morris Naftalin. And when I get the hang of this, oh, where's my Go keynote back. gone? Where's it gone? Yes. Ah, right. So I'm on this, sorry. Right. So yeah, so this is me. I've written a book about Java, Java 5. I wrote a book about Java 8. I'm in the various community programs. And what I really want to tell you about is that the Java 5 book, which was uh, generics and collections, is about to come out in a new edition. And quite a lot of what is in here has come from uh, thinking about the new edition, which because more things have changed in collections than, than, than you might think. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's a nuisance, isn't it? I said no notifications. That'll be back. Okay, we'll live with it. Uh, so, uh, the answers to many of the puzzles you'll see here are in the new edition of, the, of Java Generics and Collections, which used to be Generics and Collections, and now it's going to be Generics and Collections. Okay, so that's, that's me, and uh, let's go. Oh, wait. Next. Why am I not getting the next slide? Ah, oh, because I don't have the focus on it, that's why. Yep. There we go. And that's me. Good morning, J Prime. Great to see everybody. Um, a very, uh, we got a very nice welcome dinner yesterday, so uh, the night was a bit rough, but you know, we're still here, so I also see people, which is good. Uh, so uh, me, I'm an independent consultant uh, working on Aaron and performance, and I also what they call a disorganizer in chief for two awesome conferences. One is JCrete in Greece, and another one is JAlba in Edinburgh. Both amazing. So if you haven't been to one of these, please sign up. And I believe more is. Yeah, we've got, an, we've got an advert for them. If you want to know about unconferences, if, you're not, if, if you haven't come across them before, I should tell you something about them, just very, very briefly, a bit of, a bit of an advertisement. So unconferences are not conferences, obviously. They are very informal. You don't have a program of speakers. They're self-organizing. So a bunch of people get together with things that they've got in their head that they'd like to talk about. You don't need to have prepared talks. You just come along, and you, we, there's a kind of organization happens, but, it, but, it's not, but it's not at all formal. And you, you talk together, you eat together, you socialize together. It's like hallway sessions, only for the whole time. Go to the JUN Conference Alliance if you want to find out which unconferences there are, because there's quite a lot of them in the world nowadays, and you can apply for one or many of them uh, there. And the one I want to talk about is Jay Alba, because I'm the local, local disorganizer for that, and that one is in Edinburgh, and as Dimitri rightly says, it's awesome, and we even have next year's Pro next year's date already fixed. So please go and look at uh, jalba.scot for, for, for details. Okay, so I think that's us, isn't it? That's the adverts yes. over. And we're, what we're going to try to do now is we're going to try and puzzle you, and we want your participation. You'll find out how in a second. Here we are. Here's the first one. All right, so what do we have here? It looks like Java, because it's public static void main, right? It's not Java, whatever, 50. Then we're going to get it all cramped together, and Kotlin-like. Anyways, so uh, it's quite obvious, right? The string array um, of one, two, three. Uh, we create a list, I believe. Is that thing? Yeah, a list. And then an int array, we create a list. And then we print the content. Okay. If, if the first list contains one, add a comma. And if the second list contains one, it's quite obvious, right? I mean, two lists with okay. three elements each. Okay. Contains right. one, contains one. Okay. So, I, be I, I, I believe you. I think that's what it's going to print. So you've got a chance now to decide. I mean, it seems to me that's pretty straightforward, but I wish this thing would go. Yeah, so what happens next is that this is the code, and you have to guess what it does if Maurice can remove the thing. Yeah, the absolutely. Screen. Let's, see what I can, let's see what I can do. Oh, that's right. I do this, don't I? So the question is, what does it print? And if you go to menti.com, oh, it's yes. at the top of the slide there, okay. and you enter the number that there is there, then 
you get to vote. And your choices are, you'll see it on, you'll see it on your phone. We need, we need a lot of participation for this. Yes, so basically the choices are true, false, true, true, false, true, and none of the above. None of the above. I think I saw some of the Pulse talks before, and 95% yeah, well, no, of the time it's none it, of the it, above. None of the above is very, it's kind of very deceptive. But, I mean, it, like, it throws an exception or... But in this uh, case, or, or, it's or, quite obvious it's mm. true, true, right? I mean, it's like, what else? And trust me, I'm a certified Java programmer, right? I did, I've done my certification on Java 6, therefore I know everything. So, so moment, it must be too uh, true. Okay, so the votes are building up. Now, oh, it's really quite clear what the winner is. I, 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 every time we give this talk, I think, you know, really, it's a shame that Java's not a democracy. Right? I mean, it's, it's, you know, like, if only, if only the votes really influenced the outcome, life would be so much easier. Your programs would just do what you want them to do. Absolutely. So, how many votes okay. do we have in total? Well, at the moment, we've got um, about 65. 60. 65. And I'm sure we've got more people than that. Come on. I know this is the first one, so you, it takes a minute or two to get on there. Yeah, so if you have a vote, please cast your vote. It's going to be fun. Oh, none yeah. of the above starts, you see? Yeah, and none, none, of the above, none of the above is doing pretty well. Yeah. But, people but, but, expecting but, but, null pointer two, two, exception two, two, somewhere, because it's two, Java, two, right? It has, it has to be about null pointers. <laughs> OK, I think we should, uh, we, we should go on, because we've got quite a few of these. If you haven't had a chance to vote for this one, don't worry, there'll be, there'll be more coming up. So at the moment, we've clearly got true, true, followed by none of the above are the, are the votes. Well, let's see what happens when we actually run it. I think this is the right one, isn't it? Yeah, that's no, the right cool. one. Uh, cool, OK, let's, let's go. Uh, Arrays.as list. That's this guy. And let's see what happens. We're running just the code that you saw there. Ah. True, false. True, false. All right. Go on. Oh, all right, you. all right. So this, this one is quite uh, obvious. You see, when you use IntelliJ, it shows it in yellow, thanks to Tagir and the team. What it means is uh, it tells you that there is a slight problem in your program. Note that int array is a primitive array. And the signature for as list is the var arcs of t, so t and three dots. t is an object, and int array is an object. So what happens is the entire int array is basically boxed. Well, it's not boxed, it's just treated as an object. So you have a single element, and so you, instead of list of integer or list of int, you get list of int array. And so you have a single element, int array inside, and if you ask it contains one, of course it does not. You have to ask it contain essentially int array, and then it will be true. But Wouldn't it be lovely if the boxing worked, so you got so this, uh, this array of int got boxed into an array of integer because it could see that that's what you want? Hey, not the case. Unfortunately, the democracy doesn't work. But, but of course, you know, we're using whatever, Java 5 syntax. If we use list of, it's going to solve for all of our problems, if right? It, yeah, if, we do, if we'd use list of, then you would have got it right. So we weren't well, going we to use list actually of. Actually, it won't. <laughs> that was just a joke. Right. Okay. Not, not really. So all the APIs that, that expect the object war arcs will not work with primitive. OK. List. Right, onwards. Let's try another one. This one is, oh, this is a sublist one. So, I, right, I'll, so I'll explain here what's going on. We've got, we've got uh, this time we are using list.of, and we've got an array list of integer, and then we're going to get a, we're going to take a sublist of that. Now, a sublist is a semi-closed interval, or semi-open interval, I'm not sure which. It, it, the, it's inclusive of the first index, zero, so it's pointing at the first, inde first index zero, but it's exclusive of the second one. So this is pointing at a kind of, at, you know, it, well, you can see what it is, right? And now what we want, now what we're going to do is we're going to print the sublist, and it doesn't look like it ought to contain anything, and then we're going to add some things to the sublist. We're going to add all of, we're going to make a list of 10, 11, and 12, and we're going to add that to the, to the sublist, and then we're going to print out the original, the original list. Okay. Right. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, well, the sublist is quite obviously empty, so we're going to print empty, and then we add something to it. It has elements, but we don't touch it anymore, and we're going to print the original list. The original it's list. Quite obvious. Well, right? it looks like to me. I would say yeah. so. So your choices are what Dimitri said: one, two, three, four, five. Unsupported operation exception, entirely possible because we get those a lot in the collections framework, and something else. Which do you think? Oh, come on, it's obvious. So here's my vote, yes. 
Uh, well, yeah, why is well, neither of these. Mm. They're on us already. They're, they're only the four people yeah, that think okay. like, like me. Okay. It's weird. Yeah. Unsupported operation yeah. exception. Yeah. Quite plausible, but neither of these. No, I think well, unsupported operation is entirely possible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has to be unsupported yeah. operation. No, it has to be actually the, the obvious thing. Two different lists. Come on. We created the list. It's empty. We added to it. We ignore it. We print the original one. So, I mean, quite obvious. Right? Okay. Sounds, sounds, sounds obvious to me. Okay, we have even more people vote this time. This is good. Okay, we're up to more than 100. More than 100. Get those phones out. Okay, give it a moment longer. Um, okay, people are thinking about uh, it. Yes, people yeah, are thinking about uh, it. 19. Mm. A democracy yeah. is broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah all right. We, we do, we're doing our best to bring democracy to the Java world. Okay, let's see, let's see what actually happens, shall we? Okay, so let's find... Um, two sublists. Yeah. Uh, two sublists, thank you. Okay, and we'll make it happen. The moment of truth, compile uh, and run. Two, right. Okay. By the way, this has all been run on JDK 19 oh, with default yeah, settings. Yeah, right. Okay, but now, so. look what we got. 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, what? 4, 5. What? What happened there? You know, the first, time, no first time I saw this, I did not get it at all. <laughs> so, what's, so, so this is, the, the, but what is happening is that sublist is a view onto the original list. It's a way of looking at the original list. We have a lot of these views in the collection framework, and and they have different properties, but they're all, they're all of them have the same. Uh, the, one important property that's the same is they don't create anything new. So always you've got you've got some way of getting at the original backing. A data structure. And in the case of sublist, interestingly, it's really transparent. So, like, whatever changes you make to the sublist, actually write back to the original list. And in this case, the sublist was pointing to right at the very beginning of that list, and to an empty interval right at the very beginning of it. And so, when we wrote 10, 11, 12 into that, that got put at the front of the original list. It's ah. quite an interesting hack if you want to. Up Prepend something to the existing array list, you can just do sublist of zero, add stuff to it, it appears at the beginning. So I thought this was really weird when I first saw it, but actually it's completely consistent. So it just shows like. It's still weird. Yeah, it's still weird, right. OK, let's have another shot. Um, you're doing very well, by the way. Yes, I mean, what, is this, just, what, what is this one? Uh, uh, okay. I just did one. Who's, who's, whose turn is it? I can do. OK, so obviously we have a li an uh, array of ints. As it says ints, so there must be ints A, B, and C. Those are ints in some dimension. We have a null, a also very known int. And then uh, what we do, we just grab a stream of them, convert to a list, print a size, and do a list of and print a size. It doesn't matter how we slice the, the cow basically here, but it's uh, size of what, one, two, three, four, and then size of four. So I would vote it's four, four. Mm. Coming together without space, right? It's, that's tricky. Okay, right. I mean, what else could it be? But what, indeed, what else could it be? Well, here's your, here's your choices. It could print four, three, it could print four, four, it could print three, four, or it could do none of those. Okay, let's see the votes. Let's, let's. Okay, vote. three, four, three, four, three, four. Hmm? Yeah. Okay, three, four. Uh, People so think it's going to do three, four. three, four. Because I'm of not, the stream, stream. Uh, nah, it, well, yeah, because stream I mean, ob obviously what, what the figuring is that the null gets, gets filtered out. Get by filtered the, out by what? From the stream. By stream. Uh, get or, filtered or, out or, by Stuart Marks. Or, 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 it sits be behind and filters be, them out. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think streams do that, but it could be two lists. Nobody knows what two lists does because it's relatively ah, new. That's not the collector's it, 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 two lists. Yeah, you're right. This is this is a new thing. That might be tricky. It's pretty new, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so three, four. Yeah. Sh can I can I change my vote? Is it possible? I don't know. It's not possible. No, to you can't your change. You can't change your vote. Too late. Too late. You got it wrong. Get off. Well, what do you mean wrong? I mean, I'm just. I was. Oh, sorry, I was. You, I was minority. You, you, it's you, democracy, you know. It's everything goes, and I'm there on the board. So. Right. Okay, none of the above. Mm. And three, four. Okay, so right. we clearly have three, four winning. Three, so. three, three four is definitely winning. Okay. Let's have it a second right. then. Okay, 116 people. Uh, okay, people. right, that's what, we, that's what we're getting these days. Yep, okay, right, let's have a look. Let's run this thing. All right, so what do I do? Uh, what is it? Which one are we? Handling nulls, it's going to be yeah, 3A. Yeah, you, you, you just have to tell me. 3A. Right, right. 3A. Okay. 
Right. Oh, okay, three B. No, it's you oh, on the wrong one. You're on the oh, wrong thing. I've done the wrong one. Oh, oh, I oh, told you three A. Oh. Oh. Boris, oh. <laughs> 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 it's okay. Where is it? Oh, what a shame. Right, let's go. Um, right, so I, right, let's try again. Three A. Right. You don't listen to me, I'm saying. It's three no, A's, no, three of course A's. I don't listen to you. I would be. What would I, where, okay. would I, where would I be if I listened to you? Right. So now. Okay. Right. Okay. Oh, that's what's happened here. We have got an exception. We've got a null pointer exception, and the place where we've got it is in when is list dot of. The unmodifiable collections that were introduced in Java 9 are really intolerant of nulls. So, and one of the themes of this, of this talk is going to be that the treatment of nulls in the collections uh, framework is not very consistent. And the reason for that is because the, 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 the view of what you can do with nulls has evolved as time has gone by. At the start, in, in, you know, in prehistory, in JDK 1.2, in Java 2, nulls were just regarded as another value, basically. But once they started dealing with, uh, once they brought concurrent collections in, in Java 5, and then progressively since then, null is seen as something which should be a special value. It indicates that, like, you know, if you're trying to, if you're trying to get something off a queue and you get a null back, then it That's should enough. be a sign that there isn't anything available if you've got a non-blocking method. Now, the point is that, you, that and, and with maps, this often happens, that if you get a null back, you don't know whether that means that there was no value there for the key that you're, trying to, that you're testing on, or that there really was a value there, and it was the, and it was the value null. So you, could, you have to be very careful about this. And one of, the, one of the ways in which you have to be careful is to remember that the unmodifiable collections, like, li like unmodifiable lists and, and maps and sets, that were introduced in Java 9 won't accept nulls. So no we nulls. get a null pointer exception for that. OK, let's okay. go, let's go right. to the next one. onwards. Let's see what we have next. Obviously, uh, 3B. This, this, is, this is 3B, which you've already seen the answer to if you were quick to look. Okay, can because you... because uh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing here? Uh, so we've got, a, we've, we've got a, a, a cleverly named array of string called ints. Uh, believe me, altering these slides is not as easy as you might think. So it's, a, so it's an array of strings, and it's got A, B, C, and null in it. So this is, a, this is another null problem, isn't it? So we're getting arrays, so we, we turn that into a, or we get a view of that as a, as a, list, of, um, as a list of strings instead of an array of strings. And then we're going to call remove if on this uh, supplying this a, 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 a method handle to objects, dot is, objects is null. The objects... Uh, utility class is really useful with a lot of very very handy methods like that in it, and uh, you should know it if you you should get to know it if you don't. And now we're going to print out what the size of the the uh, the resulting list is. So uh, obviously we're going to well I don't know what do you think? It looks to me like what we're going to do is we're going to um, test every element of that list in turn to find out if it's null, and if it is null, we're going to remove it. Does that seem straightforward? Yeah, and we're right. going to print three. Okay, so, is, so there, that, is, is that an option? Yeah, so if you, which, I, I imagine no. it is an option. Four is an option. Maybe, or maybe the remove if doesn't work for some reason. Uh, three is an option. Nobody's taking three so far. This is a bit, Me. This is a bit of a shame. Uh, <laughs> neither of the above is also an option. Come on, guys. Okay, yeah. it was a, there was a spoiler. <laughs> What is, the, what? what is the matter with these people? <laughs> it's like they don't believe us. <laughs> they believe their eyes, and, and then they saw it. Yeah, they saw it. Anyways, <laughs> let's, uh, let's okay, run the code well, and just explain we, we'd, prob we'd probably better move on, yeah. Well, let's just, let's just check it, shall we? Um, but maybe this, it's this, just... This, this, is, this is 3B this time. Yes, 3B this okay, time Okay, so we'll, we'll, just have a, we'll just have a look. I don't understand how I did that before. You have two oh, 3B, of them. right. Okay, so maybe you, 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 did, you did indeed see it. So what, what was the, what's the problem with this one? Are you going to explain it? It's not. Oh, yes. It won't take, won't take you long. Uh, the problem is the views. As Maurice pointed out, we have lots of them, but not all views created equal. In this case, it's not actually a view per se. Well, it's kind of a view to an array. So what array is list is done is returning a collection that is essentially immutable. You can't add or mm. remove elements to it, but you can change the content of the array. So if you use a set method, for example, you can change the value through iterator. But in this case, we are trying to change the size. So we're trying to remove something from the array. Array is fixed size. You can't 
shrink the array without reallocation and copies and stuff. So that's why it says, I believe, unsupported operation exception, because the view is uh, read-only. This is one of the things you see in your classical Java projects a lot. So what usually happens if you have an array coming in, you call as list, and you immediately wrap it into a new array list because you want immutability of sorts because you're adding or removing. And that's usually a pattern unless you use uh, yeah. streams and stuff. So the big lesson, the big lesson from this is that views are views are really useful, but they, whether they are writable or not, or how much they're writable, depends on the individual view. Some some are some you can write to completely like sublist. Some you can't make structural modifications, which is what you what we were trying to say, where you try to structural modifications where you try to add uh, an element to it or remove an element from it. You can set elements because you can change the values in an array, but you just can't make change its length. So, with each view, you have to think a little bit, unfortunately. Uh, when you're thinking of writing to it, you have to think a little bit about, well, what's exactly going on here? Right, so next one is... Uh, a hash map. Uh, hash map. Right, so what's happening here is we're putting... Uh, we're putting... We make a new hash map. We're putting against the value for, we're putting uh, against the key for, we're putting the value null. Mm -hmm. Then we're calling get or default, Wonderful. which will, if the thing is, if uh, the um, value, if the key that it's looking for is already in the map, it will return the value corresponding to that key. If the key isn't in the map, then it will return the default that you've supplied, in this case, four. Uh, so, so that is, it's going, and what you're going to get the result of that will be printed. Then we're going to do put if absent, and no. put if absent again does does what it says on the tin. If the if the key four isn't there, then it's going to write um, and it's going to write the, the string four into the into the map. And if the key four is there, then it's going to return uh, the existing it, it will return the old value. It returns the old value in either case, yeah. I think, right? Okay, so and so we're going to so, so we're going to get those. So the, we this have those two things, obvious, right? Huh? So your choices are: it maybe you'll, it'll print four and then it'll print null because it's the old value. Maybe it'll print null and then it'll print four. Maybe it'll print null and it'll print null, and maybe it'll do, throw an unsupported operation exception. You never know. None of the above. I and mean, it's quite quite obvious. It returns null. It returns null. Right? It's null null. I mean. You think it's null and null? What else well, could it be? I mean, put if absent, as you, as you explained, looks for if the key is in the map, and it only put a value if the key is not in the map. So the key is in the map, obviously. Okay. So right. it's not going to alter the map. Therefore, it's going to be null, null, because the null is the citizen, right, of, of the world. It's democracy. They're not, they're not quite as quick as answering this as it were 3B. Three, three yeah. <laughs> they were very quick. I, I wonder they were why. very quick at answering that one. I was very impressed. People were sharp about that. <laughs> Maybe it has to do that you didn't run 4A yet. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. But look, this time is, t is, is very tight, the race. Oh, yeah, yeah. None of the above. It's, it's, and now, it's, now. A, it's a tight race. It's and a the four, four now is getting traction as well. It's a tight race, yeah. So absolutely. how would four yeah. now work? 70, four yeah, now okay. would I think, assume I, I now think, is I think, we're about, I think we're about there. Yeah, no, 115 see. people. Let's, let's, ah. let's run it. I'm, I'm so sweaty. There we go. Right. 4A. No. <laughs> four, four a. a. 4A. 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 There's 4A. And it's 2. Okay, let's see what happens. No, and then 4. Okay, over to you, Dimitri. You. All right. You, uh, now not, and you, 4. You've got like two minutes. Yeah. Uh, please, no longer. So you, can, you can go on forever about this. Uh, no, no, not really. But, I mean, quite obvious, get or default is doing what it's supposed to do. It finds a key in the map and returns a value. It doesn't check for the value. I mean, basically, it's like if contains key, then do get, basically. You, you, you can think of equivalent of it. So it finds a key and then gets a value of it. No, no questions there. But what happens with put if absent? And actually, put if absent, um, for reasons, decide to treat null as an absent value. So even though the key is in the map, it maps to a null, it treats null as if it didn't exist, and therefore overwrites it. And so what you see there later, when we do a get, we get actually a value that the put if absent put into it. This is uh, surprising, and it's uh, very inconsistent. Do we have a compute example as well? Uh, no, we don't have a compute. Well, no, we do. Okay. We, do. we do later on, yeah. Therefore, I'm not going yeah. to stop right here. Yeah. So, um, 
I think, I, think, I think if I've got this right, no, maybe you tell me, you'll tell me I'm wrong about this, but quite a lot of these, these methods, these atomic methods on maps, like putif absent and the compute methods, computive present, computive absent, those, were actually, those originally came into concurrent map in Java 5, and they couldn't, be in, uh, they couldn't be on the map interface until default methods were introduced in Java 8, and then they were promoted uh, into, into the map interface. And the result of that was that many of these interfaces, and it's even more the case now with sequenced collections, these interfaces contain methods that come from different places and all been collected together in the one interface. And the result of that is they're often quite inconsistent in their naming, and in the way they treat nulls, it's, uh, it can be a bit of a pain. But it, this, is the, this is the result of having a 25-year-old framework that has evolved. If you wanted to get it right from the very start, you would just never have had it at all. OK, let's have a look. Let's go what, to the what, next what's one. next? 4B, what does it print? This OK, is normal so what do we have here? Uh, obviously, this time we, we, we call things what they are. So it's numbers this time around. A list of minus 1, 0, 1. Nice, okay, three ints in list. And then we're creating a map. Ah, the story here is that uh, Java doesn't have a native multi-map. So how would you go about multi-mapping? You usually use map of maps or map of lists and so on. Mm -hmm. So this here is one example of that. We create a map of integer to list of integer, and then we do an for each on the original collection, so it's three elements to go through a for loop. And then for every number, we do a put if absent with the number, given a default value of array list, and then add at the end of it to the list. So, and then we print the content of the map at, at the value 0, so the key 0. So I guess it's going to be a map with three elements, minus 1, 0, 1, each pointing to an array list of a and single element the same number, each. yeah, that's right. So when so we call to 0, it would print... Uh, it's a, it's a, list, a, list, a, list, a list, list of zero. A list containing zero. Square bracket okay. zero. Are we good? Right. Is let's that an see, option? Let's see what happens. I hope so. Yeah, it is. It's a second option. So okay, second maybe option. it works. You know, sometimes, you know, like by the law of averages, what, some of these things are bound to work, aren't they? Uh, well, democracy uh, thinks otherwise. No. And nobody, nobody assumes a null. It's interesting. No, no. Oh, no. They are. Somebody wanted to prove you wrong. Yeah, well, but how, what did you vote for? Of course, for, for, for an empty, empty thing, you know, with uh, zero. For, for the list containing zero. Yeah, like a second I'm option. Quite right what, what else? Quite right we, we, we're adding to the map. Right, we saw in the previous slide that put if absent does put stuff into the map. Right. So yeah. obviously, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so, there, yeah, there must so be stuff. Right. And then yeah. we, we add to the list, yeah. right? Yeah. I think we've I, I been list. listening to me. Do you think they've been listening to me? No, Probably. no, no, that, no, that couldn't have happened. On, on the previous I actually example. Gave, I actually gave this one away on the last slide. Yeah, pe people pay attention, I guess. That's no, good. That's good. No, 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 that never happens. Well, Nobody ever pays attention. Oh, maybe, to or maybe me. not. Let, let, let's run the code. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be like unsupported operation because we're using nested for each put if absent right. thing, right? Must be. Yeah, right. Must be something there. Okay. Well, we're 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 just about there, and it's very clear that you don't believe us. Um, I, I I think you've lost faith in us. I don't know. Four I, I can't B. imagine why. 4B. Four 4B. Four four, four I wish there was some way of jumping to them easily. Right. 4B so, um, multi-maps. Clever you, intelligence. Okay, okay. So you guys are right. Uh, and I did indeed give it away, but you probably knew it anyway. Put if absent returns the old value. So, so the problem is that it was null before. So it returns a value from before. And now, we're and now what we're trying to do is we're trying to call add on a, on a, um, on, on a, on a null value. Can I check What's something? What's the matter? What have I done wrong? Yes. IntelliJ got it right. In, IntelliJ. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Intelli yeah, IntelliJ is your friend. I, I should really, when I'm, uh, when I'm, setting, when I'm setting IntelliJ up for, the, for this demo, I should actually make sure it doesn't give any of those notifications. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. OK, so let's try and fix this problem. So the next one fixes it. I believe the next one actually gets it right. What we have here now is computive absent. Now, computive absent is different, and computive absent really does return the, return the, 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 um, value, the, 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 the new value. So this should definitely work, I believe. So what we ought to get out, it's the same, it's the same in every other respect. Also, we've replaced the new array list that we called in the last one with a, with a method handle. 
So, so basically, we're going to make a new array list. When we get a number, we're going to make a new... Uh, when, we, when we compute if absent, we'll find that the number isn't there in the map, and then it will make a new array list, and then it will add that number to the array list. So, the, so minus one should map to a list containing minus one, zero should map to a list containing, uh, containing zero, and one should map to Shift a list containing... Right. So, so we're going to get... So this time, it's going to work, OK? Let's, try, let's do it. You might get null, you might get list containing zero, and I really think you will this time. <laughs> For some reason, like, I'm voting neither. Why? Not why? a single why, time why, people believe us. You, you know, I really need to, we, we need to put some in here that really do return what we say. <laughs> <laughs> no puzzler. Mm -hmm. But what's wrong with this pull request? You know, I, tr I try to help you open source project, I open pull request and you don't like it. I give up on open source. Let's see. I mean, people people don't like it. Yeah, people don't people don't like it. But I think they just they, I think they've just got to the point where they yeah, don't, because where they don't you, like anything. Because you, you don't know, like anything, you people. We, we mentioned compute if absent came from concurrent map. It has something to do with nulls, yeah. and it, mm -hmm. we have empty map. It has it doesn't have nulls, but in, you know yeah. maybe maybe some things will go around there. I don't know. No. People get confused. Mm. Mm, mm. Well, we'll okay, get now, okay, so neither of the above definitely has it. Let's have a look and see what happens. Okay, so it's 4C. 4C, right, 4C. Uh, maybe I should let you do this, because I just get it wrong all the time. Here we are. Right, let's, let's run this. And it fails again. You what is the problem? It. What is you the have problem? it on will, the screen. Will, will, will ArrayList tell us? I have it on the screen? You have it on the screen. You have it unfolded. I'm, I'm, so I'm, if you do uh, it like uh, this, you see what the problem oh, is. Ah, right, right, right. It unfolded for the, us. The problem is the compute if absent signature. It does not accept a value as a second parameter. It accepts a lambda, a factory function, if you will, that creates a value. And that factory function needs a key as a parameter. So what we have, we're iterating through the numbers, and obviously the first number is minus one. We pass it to a lambda function, which calls a ArrayList constructor with new, and that constructor expects capacity, and capacity is minus one, and ArrayList blows up. So essentially, this example just blows up with yeah. So the, capacity. So, so the lesson here is method handles are really nice. I, I, w w what we showed you was what's on the screen now. If you, if you uh, allow IntelliJ to unwrap the method handle and turn it into a lambda, then you, then you, then you, see, immediately, um, you see immediately what, what, what's going on. And the problem about this is when you choose a method handle, when you use a method handle, you don't get to choose which overload you're going to have. So, so it'll choose the method one. Reference. It'll choose the one that fits the context. Method reference, not method. Sorry, method reference. Sorry, method reference. Thank you. Uh, when you when you use a method reference like this, you don't get to choose which one, which overload. It will choose the one that fits the context, and in this case, that's what you got. But uh, it may not be again exactly what you wanted. Okay. Well. Do we make uh, more attempts to fix it? Uh, no, we no, no, we're, no, we're done with that. We, we clearly don't know how to make a multi-map in Java, so... Uh, I mean, uh, we're, we're just going to give up on that. Okay. This one, you know, this is, this is, a, this is a quite a nice one. So what we've got here is um, we're creating a hash set, and we're putting A, B, and C in it, and then we're making uh, a, a tree set, and the comparator for this tree set is case in sensitive order. So it's going to order all of the, uh, the strings in, in, the, in the tree set, it's going to order them according to their alphabetic order, but it's not going to care about the case. So then we're going to, the, we're going to add A, B, and C, capital A, B, and C, to the tree set. And then we're going to look and see whether the tree set equals the hash set. And then obviously, the hash set's going to equal the tree set, because equals is commutative. Um, so the question is really, w w is it going to be true, or isn't it going to be true? Uh, now, I mean uh, I look into that. It looks set me. equals set. True. Yeah, set equals set. set. So you you yeah. flip the equals yeah. as commutative, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. As they say. Yeah, yeah. I said that. And then yeah. I said true that. and true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think true and true? Is it is that an option? Well, I'm I'm pretty sure it is an option. It should be. Yeah. True and true is an option. True and false. And not. False and false isn't an option for some reason. And none of these is an option. Okay. Maybe that's ah, false. Okay, and false. so we've got none of these is uh, doing very well today. Ah, but true and false is coming in behind. We could do a racing commentary. You know what they're, you know what they're like at the races. You know, so, so uh, get really excited as it yeah. comes up to the finishing line. Ah, none of these is coming ahead, and it's, uh, it's none of these by a by a length. None of these is leading. Away. No, no, none, uh, none of these is. I think none of these is breaking team, free. Team, it's breaking team, free of the pack. Team Red is is doing yeah. quite good as well, but. Yeah, none of these. 
Seems to be a popular choice. Okay, none of these. So we'll wait okay. for a couple more seconds and a see. A couple more seconds, yeah. If that's none of these. I wonder if IntelliJ is going to show. <laughs> or they again. Uh, well, well, let's, well, let's, let's see. Next what, time, let's see, let's next time we'll do it in Notepad. <laughs> do it in Notepad, yeah. No syntax right, highlight, right, no yeah. nothing. So, 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 it, so it doesn't give the answers away. OK, well, it's looking like none of these followed by true false. Hmm. OK, let's have a look. Let's have a look. It's going to be right. five, I believe. It's going to be five. I'm forgetting what. I'm set thinking. equality, exactly. Five, set equality, right. OK. That's, OK, let's have a look. And it's true, false. What is going on here? What is going they on They didn't here? get it right this time. Ah. Well, first, first one. So what, what is going on here is that, the, is that you're asking, what, what, what basically you're asking, uh, if you say hash set or tree set equals hash set, is you're saying, you're saying to the tree set, is every member of hash set a member of you? So it's, so it's doing a containment test. And the, and, and the question is, like, um, you can explain this. All right. <laughs> it's gone out of my head. So essentially, yeah, I mean, we talk about equals being commutative, so you can place them out. But we have yeah. essentially quite two distinct collections. So hash set is a unique set whose, um, it's contained, right. um, whose elements basically there is no unordered unique set. Tree set has a total order on it. And the total order is defined by external function, in this case, a comparator of string case insensitive order. What that means is that when you call equals on a set, what it actually does, it takes the incoming collection and checks for every method which contains on a collection. So contains in a tree set, of course, going to answer true to, all of, to each of the elements of a hash set because case insensitive order. But then when you flipped it around and a hash set is doing the same. It's yes, asking for good. every element of the incoming collection on a containment on itself, and it's false because you know capital A and lowercase a, a are not the are same. Not so no. two different right. uh, values. Right. And right. So, so, uh, the, so it c equals in this case doesn't commute. I mean that's the kind of that's the weird thing about this. How can two things be equal in one direction but not in the other direction? That's supposed to be a fundamental property of equals, and. When I talked about this the last time, if you, um, I was saying that th this is, this is a, a big problem and it's like an inconsistency and there's, it, it, they are figuring out what possibly might, ha might be done about it, although there's already millions of lines of code that depend on this property of ordered sets. Uh, the case is that, that, um, that, the that they use the uh, comparator for testing equality they don't use the equals method for testing equality of their members. And that's what's going on. That's the problem here. But I've come to a different view in writing, in writing the book. I, the, the, basically, the specification for sets is what's at fault here. The specification for sets says that the equivalence relation on sets, in other words, the, those things which are, are a, like a single member of a set, is always equals. So a set, according to the spec for sets, for the set interface, it's saying that, it, that you will never get two members of the same set that satisfy the equals relation, because that they would be counted as duplicates. But actually, different set implementations in the, uh, in the collections framework have different equivalence relations. So it's certainly true that hash set has an, has an equals, uses equals for the equivalence <laughs> Siri is going to answer this question first. The, the, it's certainly true that the hash set does use the equals for the equivalence relation, but <laughs> the, the, the AI is wanting something. From it. it says it didn't catch that. But um, but identity hash set, for example, uses a different relation. It uses actually identity, and a, and a, and a tree set, <laughs> an order an order set uses uh, the comparator that it's been given. So they actually have different relations, uh, different equivalence relations. <laughs> so what can, you, what can you do about it? So if, if you want to make sets comparable, you essentially have to find a common denominator. In this case, we have hash set and tree set. So what you can do, you can turn a tree set into a hash set and compare, and they will be equal. Well, they won't in this case because, you know, obviously values are different. But you can do it the other way around. You can say, OK, if I take a hash set and supply a comparator 
can I turn it into a tree set? And in this way, the tree sets will be equal. The only problem with this is, as Maurice pointed out, if you, let's say, you start with a hash set of six elements, ABC and ABC, lowercase and uppercase, you have six elements. By turning it into a tree set, you're going to discard elements, which is basically you are foregoing the, um, the underlying property of, of, of the set. So it's actually a bit messy of a problem to make it really um, uh, compute both ways. But essentially, you have to turn it into a common collection and then compare on that. I don't think I've seen this explained the way I understand it anywhere until now. So you have to, you have to get the new edition of Java Generics and Collections, where I, where, I, where I make a real attempt to try to explain it um, uh, properly. Let's see what we have properly. OK, so we are on to, oh, this is oh, identity yeah. hash map, right. So, oh, so it, here what we're doing is that we are, an identity hash map, as I just said, <laughs> uses, the, uh, uses the identity relation. In other words, it, in other words it doesn't matter how many, it, it, you have to put in, it, it doesn't matter if two objects are equal, they will be different in an identity hash map unless they are actually the same object. So we're putting the, um, the, the value 1 in with, as a key, and the string 1, and 10, and string 10, and so on. And then we're doing, then we're doing it again. So like, uh, I, the question is, are these values, are these the same value? The, is the one that we put in the second time around, is it the same, or is it one that's just only equal to the first one? So your choices are, and this one, your choices are, you, when we, no, when we want size. to print the size of the map that results from putting these four elements in twice Let's over, see. you might have, you might get the answer four, you might get the answer five, you might get the answer eight, you might get unsupported operation exception. You never know. None you never know with this talk. Maybe it's seven. I just don't have it on the slide, therefore it's none of the above. Sorry? So it's four, right? Well, people think yeah. it's four. No, I yeah, mean, yeah. you have a hash map, you're replacing the... So you say put in the same keys once again, second yeah, time around, yeah, okay. size four. Yeah. I'm kind of sensible. Uh, yeah, okay. How did you expect? vote? Uh, I voted for four. Yeah. Quite right, too. Quite right, too. I mean, what else? I mean, I'm, I'm with the majority, right? This is obviously what's, what's going to happen. We Don't tell me it's going to be the yellow thing. Again. Ah, it's always the yellow thing. Right. We're running short of time, so we'd better get on. It's, I believe, six. Uh, what, what time is uh, it? Six, six identity hash six. map. Six identity hash map. OK, and we run it. And it's all yellow and IntelliJ. Ah, IntelliJ. And the answer stuff. is five. Five? <laughs> what? How is it five? <laughs> How on earth it's five? I mean, we just we give up. Like, Java is broken <laughs> here, obviously. Um, uh, well. Well, the reason is the Java spec and what they've done with um, caching. Uh, so when, when the boxing was introduced, you know, boxing every primitive number to, to an object, to an int, to an integer, is quite expensive. Therefore, a spec added um, a little cache. So from, I think, believe... Minus 128 to, 100, 127 to 127. And those values, the according to the spec, those values are cached. So what happens here, we have... 110, uh, 110 and 100 are cached. We add them to the map, so it's a map of three. Then we add 1,000, which is not cached, so it's a map of four. Then we're going to replace three existing ones with a cached value. Therefore, the integer boxed one going to be exactly the same. And then we come to 1,000 again. But this time, it's going to be a different 1,000. So if you would, like, probably an IntelliJ click, and it will unpack the boxing, if we replace it with, like, you know, value offs and stuff, you could kind of reason that if you put like on line uh, four and line eight, if you put uh, or like 11 and 15, whatever it is here, 16, a new integer, you, it will become quite obvious. The funny thing about it is that there is no way, the way the code is written, to actually get to the any of the values of 1,000. You can still get 1, 10, and 100 out of the map because of the boxing rules, but there is no way to get those thousands out. Because they're there in the map. Because but you can't ever get this, you can't create the same object again. And you, every time you put a thousand in, into the map, it'll be boxed into a new integer. Yeah. Well, there, and okay, let's put it, it, it this again. way. There is no way to construct a key yeah. to ask the map. You can always get an iterator or something, key set, and then yeah, grab, yeah, grab yeah, those yeah, values. Yeah, yeah, but, but you can't look it up. So an interesting <laughs> thing, we'll have to press on after this, but an interesting thing about this is actually you don't know what the answer was going to be to this one because the spec says that it's, good, that it's always minus 128 to 127 at least. 
But, you, but actually, a JVM can cache as many, value, as many integer values there as is, it wants. There is a JVM switch, and you can yeah. say cache for 1 million, and therefore yeah. this code will print yeah. 4. Yeah. That's why I said we run with default settings. So we're not OK, so we're at 7. And here we've got a linked hash map. And this is going to be a linked hash map on insertion order. Um, because that's the default, and we're putting A in it, and we're putting, we're putting B in it, we're putting C in it, and then we're putting B in it again, right? Now, yeah. now because the, the, the uh, order of the, 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 the kind of linkage is, that, um, is, is the order in which things are inserted, that we should get A, we, what we should get here is A, B, C, but then B has come in a, a, has come in, um, a second time. So actually, B should be at the, at the head of the list. Well, first of all, we're going to print one, yeah, because gonna, yeah, this yeah. the value, yeah, that's the and value. then we're going to print, we're gonna print the map. A, C, and B, yeah, a, because C, there is a, last insertion yeah, of because, the B, right? Because, because B has been put in B's been Well, put because in it's map. link hash map in the yeah. insertion order. OK, let's see. Is that the case? So there you've got, it could actually be saying, like I says, I don't understand any of this. It could be C, so it could three, be C, B, A, C, and B. A, B, C, A, C, B, and none of these. A, C, B. All right, so, wow. These people are very skeptical, aren't they? None of these. None of, you just, you, you, I think that's the first time when one of the answers is not voted at all. So C, B, and A is out of question. All right. But no, wait, wait, poor, wait, poor wait, wait. But, but there was the there was the get. This get might have messed things up. Was it? Uh, we added the B last. And then it called I, A. I, it might. It might have done. But I think I, I think it's a, a linked hash map is either done by insertion order or access order. And I think when you create it you make a decision about which of those two it's going to be. By the way, linked hash map is, going to, is much easier to deal with under the, under the new regime of sequenced collections in Java 21. And now the, now the, now the sequence that, that, uh, that forms linked hash map can now be accessed in all kinds of, in all kinds of different ways, basically like any other order, uh, like, a, like a deck. Or a navigable, or a navigable set, or something like that. It's, it's properly ordered. You can get at the front elements, you can get the back elements, and so on and so on, in a way that you can't do before Java 21. Okay, so we've got uh, none of these followed by A, B, C. Let's have a look. Okay, so what am I doing? Right, and it's um, which one is it? Seven. It has to be linked. Yeah, okay. okay, right. We're nearly there. Okay, and we run this. And IntelliJ. IntelliJ. Link hash map. A, B, C. You guys got it right. So what's yeah. happened here, Dimitri? Why didn't, why didn't that last one do anything? Well, as we said, the order is defined by an insertion order. And we did insert B already. So when you update a key, it does not alter the insertion order. The order stays the same. It's not, it's not modification order, it's, yeah. insertion it's insertion order. order. It's insertion order. So update doesn't count. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. A, B, and C at the end. OK, right. So well done. So kudos to, to you. Every, everyone who got, got those. 37 people. Yeah, that, 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 was, was right. that was kind of quite, quite a strong contender there. OK, last one with two minutes to go. What does it print? So we're making a list that contains one, two, and three. Uh, which we've, of course, called ints. And, we've, and um, we are making an unmodifiable collection from it, and we're making an unmodifiable list from it. So we've got those three things. The original list, an unmodifiable collection wrapped around it, and an unmodifiable list wrapped around it. And now we're going to test each one of those three pairs for equality. Does, a, does, the, uh, does the original list equal the unmodifiable one? Because it is an unmodifiable list. Um, does, it, uh, does A equal L? The, sorry, that's the second one. And the third one. And now, do the, do the two, does the unmodifiable collection equal the unmodifiable list? What do we think? So it's going to be uh, true, true, that's true, quite true, obvious. false, true, true false, true, 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 false, false, or unsupported operation exception. You choose. Ah, no, no they, were, they were completely equal for a moment there. That was just a glimpse. Unsupported operation, uh, unsupported operation except is always going to be a strong contender from now on, isn't it? Uh, well, it it's Java, right? People know. Yeah. There are null pointers, unsupported operations. Yeah. Illegal argument exception might be another thing. All right. Yeah, we should have. Well, we, we, I think, did we have equal illegal argument exception for the uh, method reference? Um, problem. I think we did. Yes, I, yeah, think I, think we did. I think we did because you can't supply minus one as the uh, as, as the length of an array list. 
Okay, so, so true, true, true is kind of leading, but false, true, false, true, false. That's an interesting one. So uh, a list of three is not equal to a collection a of three. L, it does the list equal the three. unmodifiable list. Ah, false, true, false is, is in the lead. Okay, well, we're, we're out of time. So let's have a look. And it's collections. So, uh, That's the number eight. Number eight. Collections equality, and we run that, and we get... And nothing yellow from IntelliJ. No, IntelliJ... No giveaway. No, IntelliJ doesn't IntelliJ help. IntelliJ is not telling us. False, true, false. So this one's actually really quite simple. A list can only ever equal a list. So uh, if, you, if you make it an unmodifiable collection, it's, gonna be, it's never going to be equal to a list. It's just as simple as that, I think. Okay. Right. And why collection is not equal list? Why the last line doesn't equal this? Sorry, say again? Why C doesn't equal L on the last line? Okay, well, I understand the, the, the about be, list. Because, because it's not a list anymore. It's just a collection. No, no, no. Collection C. Yes. That when you flip it around and you ask collection, do you equal list? No, you no, would no, expect no. the collection to be equal list, no? Anyways. No. It's not. It's not. No, a list can only equal another list. Right, so... We're finished, we're out of time, and we're finished, so thank you. Some lessons, I mean, there aren't really, well, there are some lessons from this, I think. One of them is, you've got to look out for nulls. Collections are losing their, their tolerance of null values, and the withdrawal symptoms are that you get inconsistencies in the APIs. So collections are becoming null vegan. <laughs> yeah, right, absolutely, uh -huh. absolutely. Well, I, originally I had this as, as addiction to null values, but I kind of took that out. Views are really useful, but you've got to bear in mind that, they're, that they're, how writable they are depends on the view. Some of them are completely writable, not many. Some of them are partially writable, you've seen some today. Some of them are not writable at all. Um, double check the type of your method references, or you'll get caught with that. And have fun. And most important of all, buy this book. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks.